After learning how to calculate B1 and B2 using the method of ordinary least squares, let us look at some of the useful results. So in total, we are going to discuss five useful results. In this particular lecture, I will show you the first three and we will discuss the remaining two in my next lecture. So let's start with the first useful result that we have. So the first result that we have is mean value of residuals in our regression. So mean value of residuals, which we can call E bar. And by definition, we know E bar can be written as summation E i divided by N. So this is the mean value of residuals in our regression. This is always, this is always equal to zero if we use the method of ordinary least squares. So this is the first useful result that we have and let's see why does this happen. So according to this result, the mean value of residuals is always equal to zero if we use the method of ordinary least squares. So let's see why does this happen. If you recall to find the formula to calculate the value of B1 using ordinary least squares, we partially differentiated summation E i square with respect to B1. And this was equal to the partial differentiation of summation Y i minus B1 minus B2 X i whole square with respect to B1. And once we did this, we got that this was equal to twice summation Y i minus B1 minus B2 X i multiplied by minus one. And then to find the optimum value of B1, we had put this first order condition equal to zero. So if I put this equal to zero here, then I will get that this implies summation Yi minus B1 minus B2 capital Xi is equal to zero. This is because this minus one and two will go to the right hand side and they will become zero. So we will be left with this expression. Now observe this expression. So see what do we have here is we have summation of capital Y i minus B one minus B two capital X i is equal to zero. And now if you observe this carefully, this is nothing but E i. This is because if you recall our sample regression equation is Y i equal to B one plus B two capital X i plus E i. So this is the sample regression equation that we have. And from this equation only we get that E i is equal to Y i minus B one minus B two capital X i. And this is exactly what we have inside this bracket. So this implies that from here we get summation E i is equal to zero. And if summation E i is equal to zero, then this implies that E bar, which is the mean value of residuals is also equal to zero because we define the mean value of residuals in this manner. So if the numerator is equal to zero, the mean value of residuals is equal to zero. So this is something that will always happen in your regression. If you are using the method of ordinary least squares, and if you have an intercept term in the model, in other words, we can say that the method of ordinary least squares is constructed in such a way that we always get summation E i equal to zero, or we always get mean value of residuals equal to zero. So let me write it here that this is by construction of the method of OLS. So by construction. Okay. So I hope this much is clear. This was the first useful result that summation E i equal to zero or E bar equal to zero. Now let's move to the second useful result that we have. The second useful result is Y hat bar equal to Y bar. So that means mean of fitted or predicted Y values. So mean of fitted or predicted Y values is equal to mean of actual Y values. So this is mean of actual Y values. And this is the second useful result that we have. Now let's see why does this happen. So if you recall our sample regression equation is this. So we can write Y i is equal to B1 plus B2 capital X i plus E i. And we know that this expression is nothing but Y i hat. So that means I can write my sample regression equation as Y i equal to Y i hat plus E i. 
So this is the sample regression equation that I have. Now, because we have to talk about the mean of actual y values and the mean of predicted y values. So let's take a summation on both the sides. So we can write that summation y i is equal to summation y i hat plus e i, right? So this becomes summation y i and on the right hand side, we can distribute the summation. So this becomes summation y i hat plus summation e i. And now let's divide this entire expression by n to get the mean values. So if we divide this entire expression by n, we get summation y i divided by n, summation y i hat divided by n and summation e i divided by n. So this becomes y bar, which is the mean of actual y values equal to y hat bar, which is the mean of fitted y values plus e bar. And as we have just seen, e bar is equal to zero. So this implies that we get y bar equal to y hat bar. And this is the second useful result that we have. Now notice one very important thing here that this second useful property which says that y bar should be equal to y hat bar, this will not hold if summation ei or e bar is not equal to zero. So tomorrow if you encounter a situation in which summation ei or e bar is not equal to zero, that means in that particular situation, y bar will also not be equal to y hat bar. And actually you can have those kind of situations in which summation ei is not equal to zero. And this happens in those cases where you do not have an intercept term in your regression model. So for example, if your sample regression model is this, yi equal to b2 xi plus ei. This type of regression model is called a regression through the origin. And in this type of regression model, we do not have any intercept term. Now, if you recall, we got summation EI equal to zero only when we differentiated summation EI square partially with respect to B1. So we have to differentiate RSS partially with respect to B1 to get summation EI equal to zero. However, if you are working with a sample regression model in which you do not have an intercept term, that means you cannot do this procedure, right? So that would mean that in cases of regression through origin, there is no guarantee that summation EI will be equal to zero. And consequently, in these type of models, there is no guarantee that Y bar will be equal to Y hat bar, right? We are going to discuss more about regression through origin as we proceed further. But for now, just keep this thing in your mind. So these are the first two useful properties that we have summation EI equal to zero. And the second useful property is Y bar equal to Y hat bar. Now let's move to the third useful property. The third useful result is this, the sample regression function, which I'm writing as SRF obtained by the method of OLS passes through the sample mean values of X and Y. So that means the SRF passes through the X bar and Y bar. And this is very easy to see. So let's say that this is the kind of sample that you have. So on this axis, you have X values and on this axis, you have Y values. And let's say if you plot the sample that you have, then this is how it looks like. And I'm assuming that there are only five observations in the sample. So this is how it looks like if you plot the sample. And if we calculate the value of B1 and B2 using the method of OLS, and if we fit a sample regression line here, let's say this is how the line looks like. So I'm just drawing it randomly, but let's say that this is how the line looks like. And what is the equation of this line? The equation of this line is y i hat equal to B1 plus B2 x i. So this is the equation of this particular line. Now see what we are saying here. So we are saying the sample regression function, which is this equation only, it passes through X bar and Y bar. And we know that if we claim that a line passes through a particular point, then that point should satisfy the equation of that line. So now if we are claiming that the sample regression function passes through X bar and Y bar, that means this should hold. So we should be able to prove that Y bar is equal to B1 plus B2 X bar. If somehow we could show this, then that would prove our claim. So let's see how can we show this. Now, if you remember when we were finding the formula to calculate B1 using the method of OLS, we got B1 equal to Y bar minus B2 X bar, right? So this is the formula that we have to calculate B1. Now I can definitely write this formula as 
y bar equal to b1 plus b2 x bar. And that's it. It was this simple to prove this third useful result. So basically what we have done here is we wanted to show that the sample regression function passes through the x bar and y bar. This is the equation of the sample regression function. So we wanted to show that this holds because we are claiming that the point x bar comma y bar satisfies this particular equation. And this is how we can show this, right? So these are the first three useful results that we have. And this is all for this lecture. I will continue with the remaining two useful results in my next lecture.